Some might say the chief of police has no business in an institution like this. But in fact, it's the quietest and safest place in town. You won't run into any reporters, nobody gets into any fights, nobody drinks too much, nobody even raises their voice. The place is owned by an elderly gentleman who knows how to keep things under control. That's why I never invite my friends here. I wanted to make an exception for my 60th birthday, but most of my colleagues are young enough to be my sons, and they'd rather just hire prostitutes. Why stare at some boobs when you can take the whole package for yourself? But there's none of that in our club. Even looking too long is considered indecent. You can get an occasional glimpse, like by accident. The rest of the time you just pretend that you're immersed in conversation, or just come by for a drink. Doesn't mean these gentlemen wouldn't want their bald heads smothered in tits. It's just that nobody says it out loud. My younger colleagues might call it hypocrisy, but I call it the good old-fashioned manners. Good manners and leave the rest unsaid. She agrees to unbutton her blouse, and we agree not to pay too much attention. The girls are on a quiet prowl, too. They're looking for a way out of their cramped rooms. Maybe make friends with some wealthy patron with a pacemaker and dentures. Everybody wants something. But we have to control ourselves, or we'll all turn into libertines and prostitutes. Hell, if there weren't any rules, I'd be belching and farting, jumping up on the table, arms held high, yelling, Shake it, baby! No idea how I got so barbaric. Hey everybody, and welcome to This is the Police. Um, I've seen a couple of different YouTubers play this, and um, it looks like a really awesome game. So let's get started. I have this is my first time in the game. Um, I haven't. I, I don't even know that much about it. I've seen a little bit, like I said, on YouTube. But uh, other than that, I, I really don't know that much. So, all right. Day one, July fifteenth, Monday. Mayor Rogers, sex maniac. The fact. Freeburg's number one paper. Mark World War II to be shown in Freeburg the day before the worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. And City Hall confirms rumors of Jack Boyd's resignation. It's gonna work. I like the graphics. They seem very minimalistic, but at the same time, they're very, um, it's really, like, cool. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60, but I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. Whoops. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. The fact that I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow is a small price to pay. Call it penance for the preacher. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Not because I'm mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But even that doesn't scare me. The worst thing is, I know I'm gonna have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them.
I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. All right. Good morning. Yesterday, the mayor's office officially announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about it in advance? Um, mayor Rogers told me that he wants a fresh face running Freeburg PD, so no, it didn't come as a surprise. Do you already know the name of your successor? Um, I'm going to go with that. It will most likely be one of my current employees. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he was looking forward to resigning. If the mayor offered him your position, would that change his mind? Uh, perhaps? Sounds possible if he thinks the new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say about this? Uh, I don't know. I've never worked with the Mafia, but I can't speak for every man and woman in the department. I can't follow all my employees around the clock. Do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Possibly? It's often difficult to say what guides policy decisions. Thank you. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Don't let anyone in. Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially Mr. Kendrick. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. That's about the only difference. Jack! I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. There's no smoking at City Hall. No reason for me to hang around. Well, this morning I signed a ban on smoking in all public buildings. Soon you won't be able to smoke here either. <laughs> Soon enough I won't be here at all. If that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> Don't, uh... Don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and, uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's the only thing that you still have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension. One that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. Hmm. 180 days of quiet, Jack. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you, and you won't have any problems with me. 
I have a new assistant, Troy Star. If you have something to tell me, call him. But try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. <laughs> I'll do my best. And quit smoking up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. Hmm. Okay then. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> Day 2, July 16th, Tuesday. Golden Bird, head of culture department, owns a villa in Italy. People await a fresh look from next, from next police chief. And Jack Boyd, Francis Kendrick, is a decent man. Cops don't use the police station cafeteria anymore. There's some kind of stigma against sitting shoulder to shoulder with your partners. Everybody just takes snacks from the machines, or grabs a meal and hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing? Don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. The only people eating here are ghosts. My deputy, Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts the subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file I asked for. Needs to be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. Would you like to receive tips about how the game works? Show me what you've got, or I'm a 60-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Well, I've never played this game before, so I'm going to ask for hints. Uh, for Big PD organizes upcoming work assignments and shifts for today and tomorrow. Every shift, officers respond to crimes in progress, and detectives continue their investigations. You can move. You can freely move employees between shifts. Okay. All officers and detectives possess Im several important characteristics. Professionalism shows the overall efficiency level of your policeman. A figure around 150 is considered average. Any policeman who falls short of this mark is not entirely reliable. While those whose professionalism is considerably higher than average are a safe bet even in a pinch. An individual's level of professionalism may rise and falls over the, fall over the course of their career. Energy shows how tired your policemen are. The less energy your people have, the less reliable their work, and a policeman who is exhausted might fall asleep at the wheel or make a critical error on the job. Your employees lose one point of energy after each working day and restore one point after each day rest. Okay? Your employees don't tell you everything. Some additional characteristics are hidden for view, from view. For instance, some cops are lazy and will come up with any reason they can think of to take the day off, while others like to drink too much. You can only guess about these things, but you should be able to draw your own conclusions based on the behavior of your employees. Alright. This looks like everybody's here. Cool. I think these are probably our detectives and our police officers there. Cool. That was the cigar. I was like, wait a minute. Okay, giant mouth. Responding to the calls is the bread and butter of police work. You'll need to send your officers to the crime scene before the timer expires. A mark on the map shows where the call came from. The farther away the destination is from the police station, the longer it will take your officers to travel back and forth. So the longer your people will be tied up and unavailable for upcoming work. Alright. The easiest way to determine how difficult a task might be is to check how many units you are allowed to send on that call. The more units you can send, the more serious the alleged threat. Particularly risky missions can give you the option of sending SWAT, but they must be accompanied by at least one officer. The number of slots is not the only thing to consider. Any available information from the location of the crime scene to the presence of weapons and so on 
All of this can tell you how seriously each case should be taken. A mission might look simple at first glance until it turns into a brutal meat grinder, or a serious call can come in which turns out to be a false alarm. Okay, hit and run, everyday mail. Or everyday mall, sorry. A uh, married couple exited a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot back over a homeless man who'd been digging through a trash can. The driver jumped out to help, and once he saw that he'd hit a bum, he got it back in the van and quickly drove away. Alright, I'm going to put Kochi and Yancey on that. The last show, Picture Theater. A theater manager reports that during a showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theater carrying a snowboard decorated with the word Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with a theater security guard. Alright. Right now I'm just sending who I have. Um, I'm not entirely sure how... When everything goes well, the police capture the criminals and nobody dies, but the truth is sometimes the criminals manage to escape. Just try to avoid any dead cops or civilians. Dead cops will hurt your roster and dead citizens bother the mayor even more than the living ones. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Cool. Offender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed, yay. <laughs> armed robbery. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a videotape store and made off with their whole collection of adult movies. The criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plate. The owner of one is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. Johnson, Jurgen, and Katz. Law firm. Our brother and sister clashed with each other over their deceased father's will. According to one of their lawyers, we don't dare separate them, and our security guard is off to do the right. Passerby saw some teenagers attack an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and money. Okay, I can send three there, so I'm going to send Yancey, Purdy, and Tsubaki. When your cops aren't sure how to proceed, they might contact you and ask you how to handle the situation, try to deal with whatever comes up, but don't waste all of your time on this stuff. You have plenty of other problems on your plate. The vehicle in question is parked right outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard through the living room window. Um... Alright. Offender caught. Ooh. Officer dead. Well, that's alright. Offender caught. Officers unharmed. This officer w wasn't our lowest one, obviously, but hate to lose one. Assaults. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Yay, cool. Alright, and our day is over. I think I'll do one more day in this video, and then when I start the next video, we will, uh, we will continue where we left off. Alright, if you think you'll need a couple of extra hands tomorrow, you can order any cop to come in and work overtime, but if they're working flat out, they'll be much more exhausted. Somebody's bound to make a mistake. Used to be, when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin, the past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. 
in his younger years he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old kipling story kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure but from the shame of it all internal affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages heard about the look on his face the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Why not a whole million? Because everybody wants to take a million. Figured I'd try something different. Half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business. And I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And... And one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Sand. Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters gives to charity, rarely attends social events. An avid hunter, I hear, even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Goes back as far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. That's not the kind of business I'm into. I don't go there. Never have, never will. Sounds like there's a lot of corruption. Francis Kendrick announces retirement date, legendary singer Gennaro Crespo comes to Freeburg, and construction of Cinema Museum postponed again. Alright. When a police officer is too tired to be effective, he will ask for a day off. Sometimes officers will request days off even when they're at full strength. Some of the reasons you'll hear are far-fetched, while some are very serious. Don't overindulge your subordinates, but don't antagonize them either. Uh, remember that everybody's got secrets, and you've got to make sure these guys have your back. Okay. While I was taking out the trash last night, I accidentally got into some poison ivy. This morning I noticed my feet were blistered. It doesn't look like anything serious, but I'd like to see the doctor just in case. Can I take the day off? Yes, but come tomorrow. In addition to their performance ratings, police officers also possess rank. Employees begin at the lowest rank and can be elevated in rank with one, two, or three stripes. Once a week, you can pass out stripes to improve the rank of any employee. If you think that no one is worthy of the honor some week, you can postpone the ceremony until later. Insignias won't go out until your people are ready. 
Okay. Employees of rank not only increase in professionalism, but also learn to command. Whenever a ranking officer is on the scene, his or her colleagues are more likely to perform better than usual. Sometimes when cops get rank, gets rank, they th start thinking more seriously about their service. This can mean less drinking and more time spent on the job. Some of them might even turn out to be dependable. Alright, start the day. Freeburg isn't one of those cities where you listen to what they say or nothing at all. You can always select any stuff from your collection and play it at any time, just like in real life, while well, the life of your grandfather. Hmm. Alright, we're just gonna... Let's learn how to hire and fire cops. Okay. You have a certain number of paid job openings for which you can hire any available applicant. Job slots are separated between officers and detectives. Um, well, we need another cop for shift B. I'm going to hire this one here. Time to free up a slot, time to fire someone. Um, I'm gonna get rid of Roy. I feel bad, but... If you have legal grounds for the termination, no one will ask any questions. You might need to fire them anyway. Legality be damned, but they could then do an additional proceedings. And your other staff will become more worried about keeping their jobs that they are about to act than they are about actually doing their jobs. And another way to free up a slot is to have a police officer killed, but that's not really a valid option, right? Um, <laughs> didn't come to work, came to work drunk, too old. I have a valid reason. He's too old. <laughs> St. John's Cathedral, Vandalism. We received a frightened call from the local cathedral. This morning, the abbot discovered that someone entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some have been broken into pieces. It seems there are even marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Um, I'm going to send Stovall and Robbins to that. Um, I can hire two more. So we're going to hire you for shift A, and I'll hire a detective for shift B. All right. Atticus Tower. Businessman Harley Jones, looking out his window, saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. We're going to send Vandal and Samadhi. Offender caught, officers unharmed. Cool. Eddie's Burgers, suspicious individual. A waitress named Mila reports that she just served a chicken Eddie and a Diet Coke to a dangerous carnival who she'd seen on television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. Um. Oh, I don't want to, but I have to send... To send those two. Offender escaped, officers unharmed. Alright, that's alright. Mr. Boy, my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again. Now he can't get off the can. Meantime, the line outside the club is stretching around the block. We need someone who can tell the cool guys from the pump punks. Send Vandal. He seems like the type that could do that. Waitress had mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for the fugitive in question. Okay, well, I'm glad I sent my idiot one there. Eleven, eleven, 
Drug sales. Christopher G. Sands Ice Arena. Anonymous call just came in. A clown carrying balloons at the skating rink is selling crack to teenagers. Oh, cool. My two top, top guys are there. I can go there. Sorry, Chief, but I quit, and one night I pulled a Mark Ash and I earned in a month working at this dump. Mr. Sarkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. I guess I just wasn't cut out to be a cop. Alright, jerk. But I got $4,500 for it. Awesome. A naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set himself on fire unless his favorite chewing gum becomes popular again. Alright, well, we'll send uh, Samadhi and Grant to that. I need to hire one more. Like As police here. arrive, a clown is seen making balloon animals for the kids. 11, 11. Good. Awesome. Four, Thunder escaped officers unharmed. Really? Alright. Alright, so we have ended our third day now, and uh, this will be the end of this video for the day. Um, I need to hire another person to replace Vandal. Anyway, um, I am hoping to get um, do this now on an every other day basis. Um, I'm trying to do as much as I can right now. I have a lot going on, but uh, if you like this video, please give me a like and a comment. Um, let me know if there's any games that you'd like to see me play. I, I have 130-some games at my disposal right now. Um, I'm hoping to do more of this and more of Reigns and more of uh, probably Fallout 4. I kind of want to cover the new DLC for Fallout 4 at some point. Um, I've been playing a lot of World of Warcraft. If you want to see any of that, I can, uh, I can do some videos of that. Just let me know what you want to see, and please recommend me to your friends. I am always looking for new, um, new people, and... Um, our new subscribers, you know, every subscriber helps. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.